Alrighty guys, welcome back. Uh, this is, I think gonna be part two of like this little maintenance um, type of videos that we're doing. Um, so the last one, we did the valve cover gasket and we got that all wrapped up and good, but we ended up breaking the CCV hose. Um, I didn't end up recording anything because I knew it was gonna be um, kind of a big job and I just really wanted to get it all out of the way but as you can see this is new now we ended up just ordering a whole bunch of parts um, since the intake manifold was gonna have to come off to replace this so we got a whole new CCV system um, dipstick o-ring uh, o-rings for our fuel injectors um, some sensors underneath the manifold uh, intake boots brand new um, throttle body gasket, intake manifold gasket. Um, there's probably a few other things I'm missing, but we ended up doing all that. It was kind of a pain in the ass, to be honest. It wasn't super fun, um, but we got it all back on and we started the car, dro drove it a few times and no crazy uh, codes had popped up from it as well. And then if you remember, we did the SAP delete. So we got that plate right there, that's all good. And we just went ahead and removed the uh, washer fluid reservoir because this uh, hood doesn't have the setup for the nozzles and the nozzles didn't work before anyways so I didn't really think it was that big of a deal um, but yeah we went ahead and took all that out and today we are actually going to be tackling the thermostat um, <coughs> you should probably do you know the thermostat water pump and hoses all at the same time but for the sake of money um, we're just going to be doing the thermostat today so uh, we'll go ahead and get started. We just need to pull off um, this piece specifically. I need to come off so that I can pull the fan and uh, probably just a fan and um, then we should be good to have enough room to get in here. And yeah, um, luckily I just noticed, I mean I noticed a few weeks ago, but I guess I never really paid attention before. I don't have a clutch fan. Um, I actually have a uh, an e-fan, which is pretty nice. I've heard e-fans are better because the clutch fans will explode from time to time and that can take out a lot of the parts in here. So pretty happy about that. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Go ahead and take this off the intake ram or whatever it's called. And then we can start trying to mess with the fan. Got the connectors off. I want to say this just pulls out. Super easy, hell yeah. Very nice. Yeah, I definitely think the E-Fan's the way to go. Um, just because that, literally my fan's out now. And then the radiator's right here, it actually looks really good um you'd have to look at the front to tell but all the fins look pretty good and there's only a few that are kind of smashed and whatnot um so yeah super stoked about that because i know with the um what's it called with the actual uh clutch fan i think it connects here to the water pump um and you got to get like those long wrenches to get down it looks like a pain in the ass and that was literally like a push tab a long bolt and then it pulled straight out so not too bad at all but we'll go ahead and get started um the connector right here we'll take that off there's a uh, four bolts in total i think i'll, I'll kind of watch the 50s kid video to get a little bit of a idea of what i needed um i think it's an 11 this one doesn't i mean it 
it fits, but I don't think this is the right bolt technically. I don't know, at least on his car, I think this was like a 13, um, not a Torx head, but either way, there's one up here, one up here, one down here, and then one um, further down right there. But yeah, we'll uh, go get this connector off, pull these hoses off. Um, I probably should drain the coolant. I'm not going to, um, it is what it is. I just, whatever, I can get to it later. Um, so we are gonna spill a little bit, but I'm not too worried about that. Pull these clips out towards us. Should free up the hoses. Cool. Go ahead and try and contain the coolant spillage somewhat at least. Um, try and put that down. It should just pull back. didn't leak that much either so that's good hopefully these hoses um when i go to because um, i'm just going to reuse them right hopefully they stay good they i mean they look and feel fine they're not super hard or anything but with these old hoses you never really know so um you know fingers crossed That's a lot of coolant. All right, well, we got that bottom one off. As you can see, there was a shit ton of coolant in that one. Um, so, yeah. But both of them came off pretty well, you know. I've never had any issues with the pipes or the hoses themselves so far, so again, fingers crossed, but I think we'll be all right. Get that guy disconnected. Then we'll go ahead and just start popping bolts. Be a 10, 10, I think an 11, and then for me it's a T40 right there. And um, just for knowledge this uh this bolt down here shares um shares a hole i guess with this it's just the the bracket that you can use to lift the engine out um <laughs> it actually looks like whoever put this on just slid this with the nut on the back side for whatever <laughs> reason um so we'll fix that but just when you take this off this one will come out as well once you pull the thermostat Thank you. 
Alright, we got all the bolts out, just them four, now we should be able to pull it. Oh, that's a lot. And that was also a lot of coolant that just came out of the head, so coolio. Um, but I was, uh, I, well the reason I was taking this out in the first place is because I, I actually was getting a leak um, from it. A very slow leak, just really only in the cold. And I think if you can see is right here at the bottom, it was leaking down. Um, the rest of the gasket looks okay, but this part is pretty much just flat. So coolant was just able to seep through. Um, but yeah, we shouldn't have a problem with this new one. There's a little bit of crud on the face, so I'll clean that out. Coolant looks good though. It actually looks very good. So happy with that. Alrighty. Got that face cleaned up a bit. Here is our new one. We got a Waller. Um, I've heard good things about the Waller ones, um, just overall. Um, so happy to see what it does. And yeah, um, gasket looks good. Looks like it's got like a, I mean obviously it's a fresh gasket, but it looks like it's got a, a nice ridge on it. So should compress and hold pretty well. Um, I've also seen a lot of people just throw a, a bead of silicon um, or the ultra gray RTV around just because even with aftermarket or even good quality aftermarket ones just in general even the the OEM ones will leak a little bit and um, you know you just don't really want to deal with that so got some ultra gray we're gonna go ahead and throw some of that on just lay a bead um, again just kind of following like the 50s kid video um, on how he installed his. And um, like I said, I didn't film taking the intake manifold off, but I, I looked up his video on how to do it. So I would recommend pretty much anything really. If, uh, I mean like if, if you've been in E46s for a while, you know, um, but yeah, that dude's definitely got a lot of knowledge and his videos are very in depth. Um, with a lot of steps in there and tips and whatnot, so definitely very helpful. So, yeah, if, if you want like a good walkthrough and whatnot of how to do um, the intake manifold, I would just I would just recommend go watch that 50s kid video. It would probably be a lot more um, helpful than if I were to just you know have made my own very long video because it did end up taking me two days to do that. Um, but yeah, all, all good, all good. So we're just gonna try and put a very light bead around where the gasket is and where the bolts go. I'm not gonna go crazy with it because the gasket does look pretty beefy, but still. Oh, that should be good. It's a little messy. Um, definitely not the best, but it'll do. So let's go ahead and get it put back on and bolt it in. See the best way to fish this in there. Fuck. God 
damn, everything keeps hitting this fucking RTV. All right, so lay a little bit more right there. We've got the fan put back in. Um, we just need to put the sides in. Uh, I'll, I'll wait on that. We just want to hit connected them before we start it. Uh, it's been about an hour, over an hour. Um, so the gasket has maker has some time to set. So we're gonna go ahead and move all of this out the way. Um, actually, you don't need to. I'm not turning the engine on. Um, we'll crack our coolant cap. Then I believe the procedure is to turn the ignition to on, fan on low. Fan on low and then turn this all the way to hot. And then, continue filling. Filling the coolant until it starts coming out of this cap. And then we'll adjust it to the uh, correct level. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start filling it up. So we see no bubbles coming out of there. We've done the bleeding process for um, probably five to 10 minutes now. Got it. Didn't see any more bubbles coming out, so we tightened that back up. Um, got a little transfer pump, transferred the excess out, and then filled it back up so it's topped off now. Um, so yeah, pretty much all we have to do is uh, turn it on and uh, see if it gets up to temp and there's no overheating or coolant spills or anything like that um, but yeah let's go ahead and uh, get it turned on all right we got that set up so now we're pretty much just waiting seeing what our coolant temp gets up to and also seeing if we have any leaks well, we're about to go back to our normal spot on the little curvy road area where we film a good amount of our driving videos. Um, drove the car out here. It's probably been about, I don't know, a 10 minute drive and I've let it idle. Let it idle for probably like 10 minutes before that just to get it up to temp and see what it would do. Um, it actually looks like uh, it's working good. It's holding right around 200. Um, degrees and it'll get like 203 204 and then it'll come back down you know 190 something so it's holding within that range which is really good um, so yeah that definitely damn, Mercedes GTR just passed um, but yeah super happy with it I guess that's a nice little wrap-up for uh, our maintenance type of uh these, these maintenance videos that we've been doing lately so definitely definitely spent some good money on uh the maintenance stuff um especially after the intake manifold had to come off for that ccv hose um i was like you know i might as well just get it done it probably needs it anyways and it is what it is but glad i did it now um now that the, now that that part's over um the thermostat was super easy that was uh, a nice a nice uh, DIY replacement after doing some harder stuff um, like the valve cover and the the intake manifold coming off and all that stuff um, but yeah so thanks for watching guys thanks for following the progress of the car and uh, just on to better things but yeah
that being said, uh, yeah, thanks for watching and um, see you next time. Take care.